Hello everyone, it's Paul Venice here. I uh, just want to talk about uh, my book that's coming out. It's coming out 12 o'clock tonight on Kindle at £4.95. Uh, just want to clarify a few things about this book. It's The book is not a Paul Venice story. It's not about my life. It's not about my story. What the book is about is about me growing up listening to stories of Lee and what stories he heard and what stories uh, uh, like affected me and all that stuff, you know. And um, I think there's bits of bobs in it about me, like like how it affected me and like, listen, being 15, 16, 17 and being from South Bank and listening about, talking about this legend of Lee Duffy and how it affected most, not just me, but most kids growing up and wanting to be the next Lee Duffy and fighting and like arguing I'm the next Duffer, I'm the next Duffer and all that stuff like growing up around and listening to stories you know talking to family members and, and, and like good family friends and you know all these people who knew and grew up with Lee and his, his family and stuff like that you know it's like some of these stories I know to be 100% real some of, them, some of them are just what people have told me but it's like are they real? I don't know, I don't know do you know what I mean? but it's just what I've been told and um, growing up and listening to these stories affected me massively. Like it, it molded me into the person that, you know, that I'd sort of become by the time I was 15, 16, you know, reputation driven, you know, wanted respect, wanted all that, wanted to be the best fighter, wanted to be well known, all that stuff that uh, that affected me, you know, because I related to loads of Lee's story, you know, like being picked on and, uh, 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 becoming a bit of a somebody by the time I was at a certain age and then wanting to chase it and carry on and be the artist and all that stuff you know it's uh, that's that's what the book's about it's not it's not a Paul Venner story it's it's a very South Bank story because it's like all these people who knew Lee from South Bank talking about Lee and telling me all these stories you know and it's like it's good it's a, it's a good read because the stories in this book that only self bankers, only true self bankers know, do you know what I mean? It's like, it's not, there's, there's not many people that'll know these stories, do you know what I mean? So, it will be different from the other Duffer books. And, uh, yeah, it's out tonight, 12, 12 o'clock on Kindle, £4.95. I'm not sure when the paper, the paper book is out, you know, I should know them things, but I'm not sure when it is. But, uh, yeah, that's when it's out. Also, guys, while I'm here, I want to speak about, uh, you know the addiction side of things and obsession things and how I, how, I'm, how, I'm, how I am and how, how I'm coping today you know it's uh, I'm, back, I, I'm going back to the meetings and I'm getting involved in NA you know it, 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 there's been times in my recovery where I've come away from NA and I've not attended and you know it's like and I've struggled and think life gets harder without it you know but that's where you, that's where that's, this addiction what we suffer from this addiction what I suffer from this disease of addiction wants me out there not attending meetings, not being part of the fellowship, not speaking, not sharing my shit, and uh, uh, and it wants me out there. You know, I always remember hearing stuff in NA like, uh, your head wants you dead. You know, one too many, thousand never enough, and all that stuff, and I never got what it meant. But t today I sit here now making this video knowing exactly what they mean. Exactly what they mean. You know, it, it, if I listen to my head, it will have me dead. It's as simple as that, you know. I believe I was born this way with this disease, you know, and it's not a nice, it's not a nice thing to live with. But if we treat it, it's a he easy thing to live with. It is, it is just as simple as that, you know. But um, yeah, any uh, is the only thing. See, listen, I, I, I've got a, a wife. Uh, my, my lass is my been with us since school and everything, you know, as I've shared multiple times, but. And my beautiful, beautiful kids. I've never stopped using for them. Never. I never could. I know that's a selfish thing. That's a very, very selfish thing. Any fathers that are watching this, you know, look at watch, look at me and think, you're selfish prick. How can you know? How can you not stop using for them kids or for your wife and all that? I'll sit here now and tell you that I'll die for my family. I will. I'll put my life on the line. I couldn't stop taking drugs for them. I couldn't. Just couldn't. I don't know why. It was just. I just couldn't. You know, it, it's one of them things. But the only reason I stopped taking drugs was for me. The only reason that change was for me, because I, I, I knew that I was going to be dead. You know, being in active addiction. You know, if anyone's watching this and they've been and they're stuck in active addiction, you will end up dying. You will end up dead. You know what I mean? One way or another. 
I remember being in a place of active addiction and not and thinking and worried about not being able to stop and causing harm and destruction and chaos. All that stuff that I was causing f through active addiction, it, it caused, it took me to a place in my head where I didn't want to be in no more. You know, I, I wanted to die, I wanted to take my own life, but it was, it was too frightened, it was too fearful. No, there was been one or two times where I took that, much, that many drugs where I thought, you know what, I don't want to wake up here, I hope I don't wake up here. You know, and by rights, the amount of drugs and tablets and shit like that that I took, there was a fucking good chance that I shouldn't have, shouldn't have woke up, you know what I mean? I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have survived. But I did, God, you know, like, through God's grace that I did, you know what I mean? I, I strongly believe now, you know, like, through getting into fellowship and NA and, and looking back at my life and my using and the way I took drugs, there has to be a reason why I was kept alive. There has to be because there's times in my 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 active addiction and the things that I got involved in and uh, and the things that happened and the way I took drugs, I should have been I should have I shouldn't have, I shouldn't be here. I definitely shouldn't be here. Uh, yeah. I mean, I just want to touch on a few messages and a few a few a bit of the feedback that I get from doing these videos about. The addictive the addiction awareness and the obsessive awareness and the obsessive behaviors and addiction and stuff you know honestly i am so so overwhelmed and grateful for for the feedback and the messages and the support that i get you know uh, the reason why i do these videos is because i don't care how many views or anything like that they get as long as one person is is get something from this then it's job done that's why i make them that's why i don't you know it's uh addiction has been a massive part of my life it made me in the person I'm today you know it's like I'm grateful for for what I've survived and what I've been through you know people say if you turn back time would you change it or would you would you have not took the job would you have not done this I said, no I wouldn't no I wouldn't have if I could turn back time I would not have changed a thing because I wouldn't be out who I am today do you know what I mean if I could turn back time and never took drugs in <laughs> that that chaos and that that stuff that happened might happen next week or in the future, you know what I mean? But look, it's just for a day for me. It is just for a day. You know, it doesn't matter how much clean time I've got or what happened yesterday or anything like that. It's it's just for a day. Just for a day, I won't use, you know. See, on the morning when I wake up, it's, it, 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 it is just for this day. You know, today I won't use. And uh, it makes it a whole lot easier, you know what I mean? Because if I start thinking, you know what, in three weeks' time there's a christening there or there's a birthday there. Or it's Christmas, or it's, or it's so, or this or that. You start thinking about, well, I'll stay off it for three weeks, and I'll use them, or I'll do this, I'll do that. You know, you have reservations, and you, and you and you think like, you know, this is what I'll do then. You know what I mean? And so it's like, just for a day, I won't. Which, and it makes it a whole lot easier to stay clean. But uh, people are messaging about NA and about what's going on with these meetings and that. Now it's the meetings are still on, uh, from what I know of. There's a lot of groups and meetings and Nycox Anonymous groups on WhatsApp and stuff that are happening now that are, uh, that, that are doing Zoom meetings and, and, and stuff like that. But, I mean, if anyone's ever interested in struggling with addiction and wants to reach out and wants to know, like, I, 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 where they are, how you find them and all that stuff, look, just just inbox me on Facebook, Paul Venice. I've got two people, Paul Venice or Paul Venice Actor. I'm also on Instagram, Paul Venice 22 if you want to get in touch or message me or anything like that I'll always have time to, to message back you know it might take a while because I get that many messages lately but I, I, I promise you I'll be straight back in touch and let you know you know what I mean and I will, I will always I will always do my best to point you in the right direction or to, to, to give you any advice that you ever need you know if uh, if you're in active addiction now stuck in it and watching this you know it's not too late and, and tomorrow's a new day you know it's one too many and a thousand never enough you know what that always stuck with me that because it's like, when I be, when I realised that I was what I was and I was an addict and I was addicted to drugs, it was like, it was as if the drugs had stopped working. It wasn't the drugs, it was the buzz of going to get them and the buzz of doing what I had to do to get them. And then once I put that first one in, it was just a way you go. You know, a thousand would never have been enough, never. Because I would just go and go and go until I drop. You know, and, and that's why I, that's why I say that I'm very grateful for to be alive because you know the way the way I used and the way I took drugs was absolutely crazy, absolutely crazy. You know I remember in active addiction. I think 
my worst years were I think I had about five or six years of going on on the on this MCAT and, and the crack, where to the point where I, I'd forgot how old I was because I'd been away for like five or six years in and out in and out in and out of my family home, going missing for weeks and months on end. I'd missed birthdays, you know, so I'd forgot. And I remember my, my last saying, I, I remember saying, well, that was a mad year, wasn't it? And she was like, mad year? Like, are you being serious? And I was like, oh, yeah. She was like, no. How old do you think you are? And I thought I was 21. She went, you're 24, you Doyle. I didn't even realise, you know, I've always still 21 because I'd missed that many birthdays and my head had been gone that much. You know, and in this, in this five-year spree, I'd been sectioned i'd been in out of hospitals I, I i think i was in prison when she when she mentioned this about how old i was on that about this birthday thing i think i was on a visit sat on the, on the other side of the table in jail it was absolutely crazy man i always remember that story because it makes me giggle and laugh to think that five years of your life or well, four years of your life whoosh, to the point where you forget how old you are that is absolutely mental man mental but uh Look, I, I, I can't stress how, how grateful I am for the people messaging me and showing support because uh, uh, I, I really am wrapped around fear of posting videos on YouTube and doing these videos, but I just feel like it's, it's my calling, it's in my heart that I need to raise awareness for, for, for people out there, you know, because this, this fellowship, this Nycox Anonymous is not promoted anywhere, it's attraction. You know, the way I heard about it was... was seeing it working in another addict and and, and it, they stood attractive to me to say look I'm clean and this is how I'm doing it you know and that's what made me go do you know what I need to go there I need to do I need to do that I need to go and and, and that's how I heard about it and, and it's attraction rather than promotion but uh, yeah the book I think I've explained enough about it, you know, because I've got a load of messages about it. I think a few people are thinking it's my full story, but that's not, you know, we're in talks about doing a book about my life and about about my story, but I don't want to really do it until after the, the film of Lee Duffy, which we're open to get started at the beginning of this year. And I hope to God that I do uh, play Lee Duffy the best way I can. And, and I hope everyone's proud and I hope I do it justice, you know. And um, another thing that I get a lot of questions about is, I know I'm bulky and, and I'm a bit, heavy to be playing Lee at this moment in time but trust me when it gets closer I will be doing a, a, a weight loss program which is and, and, and stripping down like exactly how I did for fights see when I used to do an eight week program eight week training camp for a fight and I would strip weight bang like that in eight weeks instantly would lose two or three stone easy easy just just cutting weight, cutting water cardio six and seven hours training dieting on point you know, doing a bit of fasting, it, it, trust me, it, it, I'll be in tip-top shape for that film. People are watching my videos, pushing weights and bulking up and, and, and looking, looking the thick, the thick, heavy set, and a bit, a bit of a belly as well. But trust me, when it gets closer, I will be in tip-top, tip-top shape. Trust me. But, uh, yeah, guys, I just want to wear uh, big year this year for us. Uh gym coming up we're opening a fight school a gym i'm going to be doing talks in prisons and uh i'm going to be getting myself massively massively involved in na again and uh yeah uh very grateful for the support and for everyone messaging and, and, and watching the videos and you know all i ask is that you share you subscribe and you like and um hopefully if anyone wants me to t touch on any subjects or talk about anything or wants to know anything about uh, anything else that that the thing I might know or might be interested in about myself or about anything else, you know, don't hesitate to leave a comment or or to message me on social media or anything like that. But uh, thanks, guys, uh, really appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe and like. Uh, God bless everyone. Thank you.